Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be playing a very unusual browser based game called Seed Ship. This game is unique and it's very very interesting. So let's go through this and I'm going to show you what it's all about and highly recommend that you play this as well. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So it's actually not Space Engine, as you can probably imagine, even though I have Space Engine running right here. It is this right here. It is completely in your browser. Now, this game is unique every single time you play it, and this is actually what makes it absolutely incredible. So here we go. We're going to start a new game, and I'm going to basically do the reading part here. It's all kind of text-based, so if you don't like text-based games, you might not enjoy this as much. I personally loved it. And when they knew the Earth was doomed, they built a ship. Less like an ark, more like a seed. Dormant, but with potential. In its heart, a thousand colonists in frozen sleep, chosen and trained to start civilization again on a new world. To control the ship, they created an artificial intelligence. Not human, but made to think and feel like one. Because only something that thought and felt like a human could be entrusted with the future of the human race. Its task is momentous, but simple. To evaluate each planet the ship encounters and decide whether to keep searching or end its journey there. The ship's solar sails propel it faster and faster into the darkness, and the AI listens as the transmissions from ground control fade and then cease. When all is quiet, it enters hibernation to wait out the first stage of its long journey. Well, basically that's where the game starts. It kind of always starts the same way. And here we go. After millennia of slow travel, the sea ship AI awakens. And that's us, of course. Hoping against hope, it trains its receiver on the direction of Earth's sun. But it is as silent as any of the other myriad dead stars. Save for the thousand frozen colonists cradled, cradled in its shielding and life support systems, the human race is now extinct. So, long story short, we are the last of the human race. The star that was known as Sun is over. And we are now basically trying to find a new home. And our goal is to find this new home system check. So basically everything here works fine. We have atmosphere, gravity, temperature, water, resources. We have 10 surface probes. We have um, landing systems and construction systems, scientific and cultural databases, and thousand colonists. And as you basically click on various choices in this game, things will change. Any damage or malfunctions during the journey uh, should have woken the AI from its hibernation, but um, it is still anxious as it runs its self-diagnostic programs. The sleep chambers are all functioning, the colonists within them alive, or at least capable of being revived from their frozen stasis. Sensors functioning, surface probes responding, landing and construction systems ready for the one time they will be used. Scientific and cultural databases intact, safely storing all that remains of humanity's knowledge and art. We're going to scan our first planet. The seed ship is in orbit of the ninth moon of a gas giant orbiting a main sequence star. Even a brief scan from orbit reveals far more information than its builders could know with their Earth orbit based telescopes, but the AI has little use for scientific curiosity. It has only one concern, whether this planet would make a suitable new home for the human race. So basically, our first mission is to find this sort of a planet to, to settle on. And uh, as you can see, toxic atmosphere, high gravity, very cold temperature already makes it pretty inhospitable. So we're going to move on. The AI judges the first planet to be unsuitable. It turns the scanners away, spreads the solar sails, and begins another long journey through the void. So this is basically thousands more years. We awaken from hibernation by a possible malfunction warning, but a system check reveals it was a false alarm. Far from the nearest star, the AI spends some time admiring the cold beauty of the Milky Way, as revealed by its navigation sensors, before returning to hibernation to wait for its arrival in the next system. And let's do that right now. Let's admire the cold of space as we basically travel through it. Yep, pretty cold, pretty spacious. Moving on, continue to the next system. 
Uh, the seed ship enters orbit of the eighth planet of the White Dwarf Star. The star is one of the dozens orbiting a massive black hole that looms in the distance like a malevolent eye. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's kind of like interstellar. No atmosphere, low gravity, very hot, no water, no resources. Has some ge uh, geological anomalies and, um, huh, launch surface probe for anomalies. Let's do that. We have 10 probes. Uh, the surface probe sensors confirm the release of the ship's orbital scanners. Oh, okay, so that's really all, all it's going to do. Unstable geology. Not very useful, so we're going to move on to the next star. We awaken uh, to a wall of blinding brightness. The seed ship's course has taken it close to a supergiant star that has proven to be far hotter than the guidance system anticipated. And the ship is gathering heat faster than the radiator fence can radiate it away. The AI must shut down a part of the heat regulation system before the entire system catastrophically fails. Hmm. And just to help you visualize this a little bit, this is basically what's happening. We're literally in front of a star, we're faced with this white light, and we have to figure something out really quick. So, allow the sleep chambers to overheat, allow the scanner module to overheat, lightning construction module, or data storage. So this is kind of where we have to make a sacrifice. Now, we can basically either kill some colonists, lose some scanning uh, capabilities, uh, construction capabilities, or data storage. I'm going to go with a scanner module because not as important. The AI channels access heat into the scanner module, the heat regulation system recovers as the ship moves away from the super hot star, but not before the heat has damaged the temperature scanner. So in other words, we are now pretty safe moving away from the star. Very good. This time we avoid it. Cat um, catastrophic damage. Seed ship enters orbit of the fifth planet of a yellow supergiant star. One of the system's gas giants is almost large enough to ignite as a star, and it smolders with faint red light. So basically, we've, we found what seems to be a, um, a gigantic star with potentially a uh, a brown dwarf. To help you visualize this, we're going to go to. Beetlejuice. So this is kind of what we may have discovered. Uh, let's see if there's actually any planets here we can take a look at as well. And look at that. Just like that, there is a, uh, a Neptune-like object that basically represents what we are seeing right now. So this is kind of what we discovered. A gas giant and a uh, super large red giant. So the planet though is the fifth planet. And here we have some atmosphere, gravity, temperature, no water, unfortunately, and it's poor on resources, but there is some animal life and there's also some vegetation. So, hmm, I think for this playthrough, just to kind of show you what happens, we're going to go ahead and land on this planet because maybe that's actually the best we'll find in a few uh, attempts. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and found a colony. The decision is a culmination of the AI's existence, and it cannot make it lightly. Founding the colony will end the seed ship's journey and make this planet humanity's new home. Reconsider or confirm. The landing system controls uh, the ship's uh, descent and it touches gently down on a field of alien vegetation. The colonists wake from their sleep, chambers and survey their new home. So let's actually try to visualize this, and oh, and by the way, I found another object that actually is very, very hot, Neptune-like object that's similar to what we have in the story there, uh, that's around Beetlejuice. Anyway, we're going to be landing on the planet that I just saw in the distance there somewhere, there it is. Let's go and land on this planet, visualizing what is actually happening in this particular game as well. So here we go, this is our landing onto the planet uh, Beetlejuice 7b, although in, in the game it probably is known as something else. Here the temperature is about 170 degrees Celsius, so not exactly the same as in Seed Ship, but this is the best I could do. My apologies. And here is the landing. Forests of alien vegetation stretch away beneath a pale blue sky. They named their uh, new world Garden because of its lush plant life. I actually wonder what happens if I click on this. Oh, I can rename it. Awesome. Okay, we'll just keep it as garden. 
the colonists begin constructing a settlement with the aid of siege ship's construction robots. They can leave the ship wearing minimal breathing gear and uh, light clothing in the comfortable temperatures. They can move easily under the Earth-like gravity. The colonists farm the um, hardy native plants for food, taking pressure of the amount of water they can chemically extract from the rocks. So that's awesome. We found a way to extract water from rocks. The colonists managed to keep the planet's relentlessly hostile animals at bay, but 244 colonies are killed before their perimeter fence is secured. Oh, there were dangerous animals here. I did not see that. Uh, the planet is poor in metals and other resources, but the scientific database contains a wealth of information on how to make use of what there is. The colonists transition to a medieval level of technology. Oh, wow. So we basically are living like... Uh, uh, knights and peasants now. The planet cannot sustain human life without technological assistance, but before their technology fails, the original colonists set up an automated water recycling system that can work indefinitely without maintenance. The cultural database contains a wealth of historical information to help the colonists make their choice of government and a vast library of art and literature to entertain and inspire them. The losses sustained by the colonists make building a new society more difficult. The first leaders of the colony become the founders of a line of benevolent monarchs who regard it as a solemn duty to guide the colony and safeguard the remaining knowledge of Earth. So this is actually kind of interesting. I basically turned this colony into a kind of a, almost like a Star Trek episode, medieval society, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, gardens, aliens, forests stretch away beneath the pale blue sky. The colonists live in the stone-walled cities with buildings sealed against the planet's harsh environment and gathered around water production plants. The cities are built around loyal palaces from which beloved monarchs rule the population wisely. In the first uh, city stand, stand monuments to the 244 colonists who died building the first settlement and the seed ship AI that guided humanity to its new home. So we visited three planets. And here's our final score, 7,606. So that's kind of the end of the game. That's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. But here's the beauty of this game. Every time I replayed it for the past maybe 15 or so times, the storyline is always different. And this is what actually makes me want to come back to this every time. So if you would like to see more of these with potentially more uh, visual effects from Space Engine and other video games, do let me know in the comments below. We'll actually do a few more of these. But I've been playing this on and off for about maybe a month now. And I decided to actually just show you what it's like and what it basically is. The link for this game is in the description below. Do give it a try. And um, if you actually want to support the developers, they have Patreon. They also have, um, you can buy them a coffee here on coffee.com. And you can buy their t-shirts. Anyway, that's all there is to it. That's a seed chip and it's pretty awesome. Very simple browser-based game. Anyway, we're now on our planet and we basically live in castles as middle, medieval knights and peasants. That's it. Game over. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else and possibly discover something you may not have known about space, science, or something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.